Come on, Jack, pick up. Come on. It's me. I need your help. Look, I think they're on to me, and I'm not being paranoid, really. But I got everything I needed. All the proof. Yeah. Maybe now you'll listen to what I'm... Look, I think I'm being followed. Just call me back as soon as you... Exactly sure what's going on. Any ideas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll head over there now. Tess. Raj. Thanks for getting here so fast. Mm -hmm. How was your flight? Long and uncomfortable. My nurse, Emily. Hi. Look, I'd love to catch up, but we really should get to this. Absolutely. So, any initial diagnosis come to mind from the information I sent over? Well, I think it could be a number of things. I, I think the symptoms are too broad for me to speculate right now. We have three new cases, all presenting the same acute flu-like symptoms, but they're not responding to any of the treatment. Uh, what about the respiratory problems? The same in all of them. Almost asthmatic, which is why my first thought was pneumonia, but they're not responding to any of the meds. Did you try any tetracyclines? No, we had to keep them on corticosteroids in order to control the lymphatic inflammation, which is a major contraindication. Exactly. Well, when was the first patient admitted? Uh, 36 hours ago. This is Heather. Hi, Heather. You didn't mention the conjunctivitis. It only developed two hours ago. Heather. Heather, can you hear me? It's Dr. Patel. I brought another doctor here to see you. This is Dr. Martin. She's a specialist with the Global Health Organization. I'm hoping she can help us figure out what's going on. 
Okay, Heather, I know you have some swelling in your glands here and on your inner thigh. I'm gonna take a look. How long have these looked like this? There was no blackening when I checked her an hour ago. <gasps> okay. Okay. Heather. Can you tell me how long you've been this tender? A couple days before I really got sick. Thank you for your help. What are you thinking? I don't know yet. We need to run some tests before I can be sure. My guess is that she's going to be dead by the time I get the results back. We've got to find every person who's been in touch with any of these people in the last 48 hours and get them in here ASAP. Got to get this contained before it gets out of control. Dr. Michelle, I think you both need to see this. Poisoning our food, air, and water. But if we stay focused and committed, we can make a difference. Now, it's time to shake things up. We need to make people aware. Post flyers, spread the information. It is not a coincidence that more and more people are getting sick. All right, that's it for today, fellas. Thank you. You keep up the good work, all right? You're doing a good job, huh? Keep it up. Hey, stay on top of that website, man. You gotta do it, all right? Good. Hey, Jack. Hey, Gary. Here. Straight to the point. Always like that about you. All right, let's see what we got here. No, not these. Scroll down. She came in this morning. She Keller or the airlines? Hell, you're getting more paranoid than I am. That is Dr. Tess Martin. She's a friendly, works for the GHO. You know her? Only by reputation. She's the best there is. No kidding. She could be our girl then. Could be. All right, well, let me know what you find out about her. You're gonna head back out. Hey, be careful, Jack. My role within the GHO is to identify rare viruses with this special emphasis on preventing outbreaks. Dr. Martin, to quarantine an entire city without a proper diagnosis is, at best, irresponsible. I mean, we're talking statewide panic and millions of dollars in economic losses. I understand, but this virus is progressing at epidemic proportions. If it's not contained, then the consequences are going to be much more costly. And I'm to understand that no one has died? Or that we know of. We have not been able to identify the source. Doctor, we are all very reassured by your arrival. Thank you. With your considerable experience, why has this diagnosis been so elusive? Well, the patients are displaying a variety of symptoms. They're progressing at varied rates. New symptoms are appearing hourly. It could be a number of things. You must have some initial thoughts of what it could be. Well, it's premature for me to hypothesize. Please, Dr. Martin. I, I really do think it's premature. Doctor, whatever is said will stay within this room. Please, if you have any ideas. It could be anything from the avian flu to the bubonic plague. The plague? I understand how alarming that must sound. I, I've only seen 
this range of symptoms in rural Asian countries where outbreaks like this are more common. We haven't seen the plague in the Western world in over 100 years. So, so you're saying that you think it might be the plague, but in the same breath you're saying that it can't be? I'm saying it shouldn't be. I don't have a better explanation at this moment. I appreciate your candidness, Dr. Martin, but I simply cannot justify a quarantine based on a hunch. Now, the governor is waiting to hear what's going on, so uh, why don't you come back to me when you have some real answers? I'm going to have to agree. We're not going to quarantine a whole town until we know what we're dealing with. You're taking quite a risk. Which is why you shouldn't be wasting your time with us. Find the source, make the diagnosis, and you'll have your quarantine. The diagnosis may come too late. Well, I would like to offer the full support of Keller's resources. Any uh, drugs or manpower will be available to the hospital effective immediately. That's good of you, Dick. Thank you. Gentlemen. I can't believe they're willing to compromise people's lives. Something's never changed, Tess. Well, we have to find the source. I want to gather all the information we can about all the first patients. Oh, hey, hey, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at Denver Gates on the Spokane Express. Denver? Uh, yeah, my dad was a Broncos fan. Wait, how did you get in here? This is a restricted area. Ah, uh, front door. Is there any comment on the cause of the epidemic? There is no epidemic. And for your own safety, you need to leave. Oh, come on, Dr. Martin. You can do better than that. Sorry, do I know you? Did they approve the quarantine? How did you know? Did they approve the quarantine, and when would it take effect? There is no quarantine. Did you get your scoop someplace else? <sighs> OK. These are the first patients admitted. Somewhere in this is a common link. I want to start with their jobs. And Heather is a stewardess. That makes sense. Get on the phone with the airline, get her flight itinerary. I'm guessing she does international flights. Okay. Uh, Anna is a local college student. I'll get her class schedule. Great. Mm -hmm. Tom is a local landscaper, and I've got nothing on Maria. Landscaper. Okay. You take Maria, I'll take Anna. And I'm going to need a list of uh, Tom's clients, okay? Okay. Let's go. Hi, Anna. I'm Dr. Martin. I'm going to be as brief as possible, but I need to ask you a few questions, all right? Is your family in Spokane? So you're here for college? Yes. And it says that you have an apartment? Do you have roommates? A boyfriend? What is it? Anna, the quicker you tell me what you know, the faster I can help all these people. You have a boyfriend. Did you meet him at school? What classes do you share? He's one of my professors. What's his name? I don't want him to get into any kind of trouble. He may already be in trouble. Have you seen him recently? I saw him two days ago, after he came back from a trip and he wasn't well, so I left. What's his name? Dylan. Professor Dylan Corbin. Thank you. You've been a lot of help. I'm scared. It's OK to be scared. I'd really like to see my family if I could. Well, I'll make sure they're contacted, and I'll bring them in as soon as they arrive. You hang in there. Got a lead. 
Okay, Professor Dilly Corbin teaches at Anna's college. Administration had him traveling due back in class three days ago. He never showed. Okay, so she must have met up with him at his place the night he got back. And Heather is the stewardess on his flight. Right. The others? Uh, Maria is a housekeeper. What's Corbin's address? Uh, 816 Forest Lawn Drive. Well, bingo, she cleans his house. Uh-huh. Well, get this, Tom does his landscaping. All right, you guys, great work. We might have found the source. Get a passenger manifest from that flight. We need to get the word out immediately. This virus could have been spread all over the country by now. Come on it. Oh, oh. Oh, Raj, it's me. I found Corbin's body. They say he's been dead two, three days. He had a mosquito bite on him. And he's been to Malaysia, Raj. Get a hazmat team out here and seal this place up right away. No, it's the plague. I'm sure of it. It's not airborne. I need you to get on the phone with the mayor's office as soon as possible and get this place quarantined. We have no idea the size of this epidemic.
here in Spokane, Washington. The military has been called in to ensure our city's quarantine is handled properly. We now take you live to Mayor Tanner on the quarantine. People over the great state of Washington, hours ago we learned of a deadly virus that threatens the lives of the citizens of Spokane. We regrettably call into action a state of emergency and declare a quarantine be enforced across the city. Everyone, please, there is no need to panic. We brought in the military to help with the situation, and I promise you, we are doing everything we can. I, I know your concerns, but there is an immediate health risk spreading as we speak. You are being advised to stay indoors. I'll now give you over to Major Stein to answer questions. Major Stein. Before I address some of your questions, I'll give you a general idea of what I do know. Dr. Martin. Hey, I think we got off on the wrong foot. You're trespassing. Ah, she's not going to give me an inch. Look, I'm not really great with reporters. Uh, just give me a chance. I'm really not a bad guy. No, I'm sure. Seriously. God, what do you want? Uh, a couple quick answers. Do you know what uh, caused the epidemic? Do you have a cure? There are plenty of PR people out front. Man, I'm not looking for spin. I need the facts. The facts? Yeah, like Professor Corbin bring back more than just his luggage from Malaysia. Are you following me? There's more going on here than you know, Dr. Martin. Hey, Dr. Uh, Martin. Yeah. Dr. Patel's waiting for you in the ward. The patients are not responding to the antibiotics. None of them. No. We don't know the extent or scope of this outbreak. We uh, have top medical Something's wrong. here. From Taylor's here. Cozy up with the military, holding hands with the mayor. To solve this problem. And, uh, no, they haven't seen me. Unfortunately, we just don't have that much information we can give you. So I'm going to field questions. Please respect the fact that I may not be able to give you much information. They've all been given a full course of antibiotics. No response, huh? No. Who we have here? This is Maria Habentes. Hi, Maria. Oh. Maria, do you have any kids? How many? Four boys. Oh, my. You don't mess around, do you? What are their names? One. Mm -hmm. Pablo, mm -hmm. Jose, and Fred. Fred? After Fred is there. Oh. My husband and I love all his movies. Oh, he's so graceful. Wow. You certainly have dancer's legs. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get a nurse to come in here with a little TV. Let you watch a little swing time, cheer you up, okay? A little secret. She was admitted two days ago. She's progressing way too fast. The cases in Malaysia weren't nearly this aggressive. Doesn't make any sense. Well, we had at least four or five days. The antibiotic cocktail should at least be buying us some time. But not one patient has responded. <sighs> Who's this? This is Tom. Hi there, Tom. Hello. Are you hanging in there? Besides the food and the whole plate thing? Yeah, I'm doing just fine. Oh, and the whole creature of the night thing's kind of cool. Oh, yeah? It's not helping much with the ladies, though. No, huh? What happened to the funny suits? Oh, well, it is not an airborne virus. It can be spread only through touch. I heard this started with Professor Corbin. Uh-huh. I guess that was one deadly handshake. Hey. That nurse Emily's quite something, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. I think she's pretty great. Well, you gotta clear this thing up for me, Doc. 
Because there's no way she's going out with me looking like this. You keep those spirits up. I'll have some of whatever we're giving him. Okay, no kidding, huh? Uh, I'll catch up here. Okay. Anna, hi. I uh, wanted to let you know that we got in touch with your folks. It's a good news, bad news kind of a thing. Well, give me the bad news. The quarantine took effect before they could get into the city, so they've been turned away. But the good thing about that is you don't have to worry about them getting sick. I, I saw Brandon here earlier. He's in my geology class. Mm -hmm. Did he get infected too? Well, unfortunately, a lot of kids from your campus are here. Want to write him a note? Send him a message? With the amount of tragedy she's seen, I'm surprised she still gets so invested. She lost her daughter a few years back. She's been trying to save the world ever since. That's awful. Grace was two years old. She had a fever and a rash. Tess thought it was rubella. By the time we got to the hospital, it was too late. So what was it? Meningitis. She never forgave herself for misdiagnosing it. How do you get over something like that? You don't. Did you get on the phone with that pharmaceutical company? Kelly. Yeah. I'm in surplus of everdyne and azithromycin on site. Get me blood work. Do a complete workup. You gotta find out what the hell's going on here. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah. A little jet lag, that's so. all. Look, why don't you go back to the hotel for a bit? I can page you if there's any major developments around here. Wait, somebody will see. That's the thing. Any news? No, nothing yet. Hey, I got your text. What's up? 
Well, I may have found the common thread. Really? Everyone's immune systems are completely shot. Their antibody counts are dangerously low. Yeah, but the plague doesn't do that. No, I know, but I think it's why they're not responding to the antibiotics. So what, do we misdiagnose this? No, no, it's... Uh, come in. It's definitely the plague. I just think there's something else we haven't seen. Thanks so much. Well, what are you looking for? Immune suppressing agents. What, metals? Yeah. This. Barium, five milligrams, aluminum, seven. What the hell? Okay. This might sound a little weird. Have you ever heard of chemtrails? Yeah, it's um, where the government's supposedly mixing chemicals in with jet fuel. Contaminating the white vapor trails that commercial airlines leave behind. Yeah, my son always says that when two of them cross, it looks like this guy's blowing your kids. All right, so what does this have to do with the outbreak? Well, go with me on this. I did a little research last night. What if it's true? What if the chemicals are affecting the general population somehow? Come on, Tess. I know these conspiracies pop up every time something goes wrong. Oh, I know. But how do you explain that? Yeah, I can't. I'll tell you what else I found. You know that uh, company, Keller, yeah, they're one of our main suppliers. Yeah, they're not only supplying pharmaceuticals, they've got their name plastered all over these sites. So, you're trying to link Keller with, with the outbreak? Not necessarily. I'm, I'm trying to find a clue that will get me to a cure. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all for that, Tess, but... I don't know. Seems a bit much. Yeah. No, you're right. Look, I'm gonna go upstairs and check on the patients. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll catch up. Okay. Okay. Edgar, it's me. They're on to me. I'm gonna have to crash in your place. Okay, I'm on my way. I know it sounds a bit ridiculous. Yes, it does. I called you in here for a progress report, and all you've got is a conspiracy theory? It adds up. No, it doesn't, Dr. Martin. I've known Dick Taylor, the head of Keller, for 20 years. He's my son's godfather, for Christ's sake. Can't you just remove the metals from their systems, then use the antibiotics? We're already administering the meds that will remove the metals, but that could take weeks. We've also started distributing them around town. But the antibiotics won't work without the metals being cleared. We're counting on you. The families being torn apart by this epidemic are counting on you. I want you to call me the minute you have something that I can bring to the governor.
This is almost more attention than I can take. I'm not complaining or anything, but it seems like you never leave the hospital. Not during an epidemic, I don't. Your boyfriend would be jealous if he knew we were spending so much time together. Oh, I don't have a boyfriend. A boyfriend? My odds are getting better. I have a policy, actually, about dating. Patients that look like the swamp thing? So then, theoretically, if I, if I wasn't a patient? Then I would probably go out with you. Morning, Tom. Hi, how are you feeling today? Great. Thanks, Emily. Okay. Oh, okay. She said she'd go out with me once I get better. No kidding. Congratulations. Work some magic for me? I'm doing my best, Tom. I can't stay here. I can't stay here, Doc. You're gonna be okay. No, oh, I... Oh, I don't want to die, Doc. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. It's okay, sir. Let go. Let go. It's okay. We're doing everything we can. Look at me. Look at me. You're going to be okay. We're doing everything we can. You're going to be all right. Look at me. In the eye. And calm down. Take a breath. He's just scared. Okay? Go get washed up. Go get washed up. It's okay. Hey, hey, hey. Open your eyes. <laughs> What's this patient?
Could you please look after Dr. Patel? Thank you. Keep your voice down. Don't look back at me. Start the car. Act normal. Do you want to know what's really going on? Yes. Then get on the I-90 heading south. I know a place we can talk. So is kidnapping me your way of building trust? Sorry. I, uh, didn't have a lot of options. Mm. Well, you've got one cup of coffee. I'm with a small organization that's working to protect the American people. How noble. <laughs> I know it sounds like a line of a bad crime novel. But, uh... Someone has to take the fight to corporations that are endangering people's lives. And that's what's going on here? Plain and simple. I'll have to tell you that diseases have been on the rise since the early 90s. Diabetes, asthma, Alzheimer's, cancer, autism, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. At any given moment, there are over 4,000 jet planes flying above the United States. We've been gathering data for years, chartering the flight patterns, watching the people along the routes get sicker and sicker. They're putting something in the jet fuel that's making people sick. Okay, why would they want to do that? Some people think it's population control. Hmm. Other people think it's to increase our dependency on pharmaceuticals. We don't know. But that's where you come in. Me? Yeah, you work for a global health organization. My job is to diagnose and contain viruses. What do I have to do with this? Well, tests are legitimate. People will listen to you. What do you want me to do, exactly? Kill her. Makes a chemical called E901. Kill her. We got someone on the inside that's working to get us a sample. When we get the E901 and we compare it with the jet fuel, maybe you can help us figure out what's hurting people. I may already have an idea. I found barium and aluminum in the patient's blood. So, what? So, if the metals that you found in the blood are also found in the E901 in the jet fuel, then... I think we would have enough to go public. I have to go. Unless you're planning on holding me hostage. No, no, <laughs> I hope that wouldn't blow my chance of a second cup of coffee. Tess, think about even tonight what's falling from the sky.
crashing. Okay, Maria, stay with us, Maria. Yes. Quick, get the oxygen. Take deep breaths. Maria, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Breathe, take a deep breath. I thought you were going to get a change of clothes. I got sidetracked. Oh, Raj, I'm sorry. I should have been here. Don't do that, Tess. There's nothing you could have done. I know. Everyone's on the Democrat brawl in the ALA to reverse the effects of the metals. Yeah, they've been distributed throughout the town. We're on our way to containing this thing. It's a job well done. It doesn't feel that way. It's our body count. Locally, with Maria, 14 have died. That we know of. There are more out there. How many contaminated? I think we're in the high 60s. I'm all gonna die if I can't find a cure. Sorry to bother you, doctor, but I just want to run something by you. Oh, I'm so we're really busy right now. You know what? It'll it'll just take a second. Excuse me, doctor. I'll be in my office. Okay. Just right in here. Thank you very much. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Come see it, please. Go ahead. You can let your guard down, doctor. It's a it's a friendly room. Dr. Martin, we know you have your hands full. Nonetheless, we felt it important to clarify a few things for you. What you have to understand, doctor, is that when, when companies such as Keller achieve success in the marketplace, we become easy targets. We spend millions of dollars every year defending against frivolous lawsuits, a kid who develops a rash, or wingnut conspiracy groups who accuse us of government corruption. Now, I imagine you've met this man. From everything that Mayor Tanner tells me, I can guess that he is your anonymous source. His name's Jack Bowen. Probably not the name he gave you. It's a sad story, really. He uh, graduated Columbia University in journalism. Promising start to his career. Worked at the Post for a little while. Until his younger brother, Jason, killed himself. He, uh, Police reports in the file. Now, Jason, he was an employee at Keller, and he was, he was a young up-and-comer. The, 
police investigated, they determined that it was, in fact, a suicide. Dr. Jack was never able to deal with what happened. He decided that we were to blame. Now, we were all very sympathetic to his loss. You know, when Jack was on his own, he wasn't much trouble. But when this man, Edgar Haskin, got a hold of him, he started to become a problem. The, uh, the break-ins and the, uh, the lawsuits and the threats against our lives, it all got to be a bit much. The courts awarded us a restraining order, which obviously hasn't made much difference. We hired a private security firm. Doctor, Jack Bowen is considered unstable and dangerous. Whatever he told you is sadly misguided and totally erroneous. And what about the medals I found in the patient's blood? Well, I, do you have any proof they came from, what was it? Jet fuel. Jet fuel? No. Hmm. If you flip to the end of the folder. You'll see that we do provide conditioners to the government to refine their jet fuel, but I can assure you there's nothing in the jet fuel that is harmful in any way. There is no barium. There is no aluminum. The government tests the fuel annually. We adhere to the strictest standards. I am sorry I haven't been able to keep a better handle on Jack. But I can assure you that there is nothing more going on here than what is in that file. Jack? Jack? Alex? Ah, can't tell you how grateful we are, how important this is. Look a lot like your little brother. Jason worked under me. He's a great guy. I'm just sorry I didn't come forward sooner. After what happened to Jason, I figured I'd better keep my head down. It's a difficult decision to make. It was. I'm not brave like your little brother. but it's the right thing to do. The outbreak made that crystal clear. Get this tested right away. Let's get it done. Well, thanks to you, maybe we can. Did you come alone? Yeah. There's the back door.
Diana. Thanks for coming out so quickly. Here. These are uh, each file is filled with a sample of jet fuel from five top airlines. When you get the results, take them to Channel 7 on Boundary Road. They'll be expecting you. How do I know you didn't mix those together yourself? What? Why would I do that? You've been lying to me from the beginning. Why would you stop now, Jack? Yeah, Taylor told me everything. Uh, from your brother, the restraining orders, the lawsuits. I, I, I've even seen your arrest record. <laughs> I, uh, I lied about who I am. OK. But not about what's going on. I couldn't take a chance on you not believing me. I don't like being manipulated. before and they'll kill again. I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend this isn't about my brother. He died trying to save people just like you do. I hate me. Do you turn me in? I don't care. Just please test the vials. Why would I want something that wasn't authentic to go public? Are you bleeding? What happened to you? I missed. I gotta clean this up. It's fine, Tess, please. Well, Just, please test the files. You've been shot. Let's go. Come on. A few more inches to the right. You might have been dead. I got lucky. What's up? The virus has spread to three cities in California, Iowa, and Canada. What, was the quarantine line breached? No, it's the other passengers on Corbin's flight. Have the other cities been quarantined? Not yet, but they're working on it. How many are we up to? Well, we got 85 infected, but it seems the quarantine's starting to take effect because we haven't had any new patients in the last couple of hours. Are you on the busy? Yeah, we reached capacity a couple of hours ago, but I got no beds to put the new victims in. What? Your nose is bleeding. It's probably probably just stress, right? Yeah. R Raj, you can't go in there. 
Chris, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. I'm gonna take care of this myself. No, Emily, thank you. Come sit down. Thank you. Grab that for me. Evening October. Leaves on the ground just yet. I can't remember. My friend, don't let me forget. And we were called. So I guess that's it. No, it's not it. There's a solution. I'm gonna find out what it is. Don't talk to me, Tess. I'm gonna start you on a double dose of Demerol and ALA. It's not gonna make a difference. Yes, it will. If it builds up in your system, pass me. Just will. stop, Tess. I will find a cocktail that is gonna do both things. That will take months. Well, then I better get started. I have a bed ready for you. Jack? Yeah. Get in the vials? Come on. Hop on. Oh, it's a rush. I'm just trying to save lives, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. examiner's office. Oh. <clears throat> All right. Creepy. What made you change your mind? Well, the virus has spread to three more cities. We're talking thousands of lives if we can contain it, and if we can't... Millions. So you need to find a vaccine? Well, I'm pretty sure there already is one. I don't think Keller would have released this into the world without protecting itself. But they won't release the vaccine because it'd be like admitting their guilt. Which is why we're going to help them out. You have that address at the TV station? Yeah. There'll be somebody waiting there for you. I 
I had to rush some results. I was just packing up. do you think you're doing? We you just saved your life, Dr. Martin. You should be thanking us. Oh, thank you for scaring the hell out of me. Well, at least you're alive. Where are my samples? What's in those samples are considered state secrets. Unfortunately, we can't give them back to you. So you're in on this, too? There's more to this than you think, Dr. Martin. Does Jack Bowen have this information? I don't know. He's in real trouble, Dad. Yeah, I saw your money work. A couple more inches to the right, he would have been dead. He's been shot. You didn't know that. Those men don't work for us. Mm -hmm. We've been suspicious of Keller for quite some time, but your results took us by surprise. What I'm about to tell you can never leave this room. Keller won a bid for a military contract over a decade ago. The focus of this project and its outcome are classified. So you have been putting chemicals in the jet fuel? With the sole intent of slowing global warming. But somewhere along the way, Keller made a few changes. Why? Money, Dr. Martin. He's been cutting corners to people's lives. How could you let that happen? We trusted him. But thanks to your results, the United States military will be conducting a full investigation. A public investigation? I'm afraid that's just not possible. Look, we need to get Jack off the streets, and then we're going after Taylor. Now, do you know where he is? No, I don't. I think it would be best if you didn't leave this building until we get this under control. Is that an order? Let's just say it's in your best interest. Hello? Oh, God. Did you get the 
word out? Uh, no. I was uh, stopped by Major Stein before I was able to get into the station. Did you get the samples? Uh, uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter. I still have the test results. Come on, I gotta get you out of here. Come on. Alex says the vaccines are kept in a secure facility underground on level D. Mm. Now, you're looking for vaccine E-901A. I should be able to buy you at least 15 minutes. I hope that's enough. Oh. Now, the facility's been operated by a skeleton staff since the quarantine. Should make it easier? OK. I uh, printed out a copy of the test results. You can fax one to the mayor's office as soon as we leave. You sure that's a good idea? Well, if he's in on it, he already knows. If he's not, we could use all the help we can get. I like her. <laughs> OK, Taylor's waiting. Let's go. Hey, good luck. That wraps it up, gentlemen. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. And be careful out there, all right? Thank you. Thanks for coming, guys. Ah, uh, doctor, right on time. Come on in. Just have a seat. Can I get you anything? Uh, water, soda? Uh, no, no. So. I hope you have good news. I think you know that I don't. Uh, you were very urgent on the phone. What can I do to help? I did some tests comparing the ingredients of Keller Z901 with the jet fuel from five major airlines. I'm not following. I have proof that you're contaminating this country's jet fuel, causing people's immune systems to break down and making this outbreak virtually unstoppable. You do? Yes, I do. Well, that's quite an accusation, uh, doctor. I really hope you have a good team of lawyers.
My only objective is to stop the outbreak. But in order to save lives, I'm gonna need you to do the right thing. I've given you full access to my staff, to my medications. I need you to hand over the vaccine. <laughs> the vaccine? I won't tell anybody the whole story. I'll, I'll, I'll take credit for the vaccine myself and you can go on living your lie. Well, that's all uh, fine and good. But I mean, what makes you think I have the vaccine? Jack, good of you to join us. Come on in. You know, Jack, the good doctor is beginning to sound an awful lot like you. Oh, is that right? You're gonna tell us exactly what we want to know. I still don't understand what you guys are talking about. Oh, yeah, is that right? Oh, God. Tell us where the vaccine is. You can go to hell. Dr. Martin, I really don't appreciate... Hello? Mr. Taylor, we are facing a pandemic here. We know that you have the vaccine. Of course I have a vaccine. You only get released those chemicals without protection, do you? Yeah. Where is it? You don't have to worry about the vaccine. You're both gonna die before anyone gets a chance to use it. Get me the chief. We need to mobilize SWAT now. as easy as your brother was. Don't quit, do you? He has a vaccine. Yeah, uh, I, I know that. I'll, I'll get it off him. You need yeah. to get back to the hospital. Take care of Mr. Bowen. I'll have a vaccine okay. sent over. Are you, are you all right? Yeah.
I helped you get that contract, Dick. If I'd have known what my lawyer. I'm afraid we're way past lawyers now. Tell me you haven't been holding on to a vaccine this whole time. People are dying. Thanks, Mayor. We'll take it from here. I've got this under control, Major. My orders come from the top, Jim. This is under federal jurisdiction now. He has a vaccine for this epidemic. I understand that. The situation is under control. I want that vaccine ASAP. You're a disgrace. Okay, Dick. This is how this situation's gonna play out. stock plummeted today after the company was found responsible for the outbreak of the plague virus in Spokane, Washington. CEO Richard Taylor had no comment as he was arraigned on federal charges. Doctors at St. Vincent's Hospital are being celebrated as local heroes for helping to diagnose and contain the viral outbreak. Dr. Tess Martin and Dr. He's another round of vaccines. Oh, great. Is anyone responding? Aww. Why don't you see for yourself? I want to thank the people of Spokane and Americans everywhere for their steadfast bravery in these darkest of days. It's times like these when heroes rise to the occasion. Come in. Come with me. Oh, Anna, I have a surprise for you. Mama, Mama, thank you. I was thinking roller disco. Roller disco? Well, the doc said I'd be up and around in a matter of days. Mm -hmm. And since you agreed to go out with me, well, I said probably, and that's when I thought you were a goner. Oh, so it's a pity bit. I'm fine with that. You are relentless. That's one of my better qualities. Hello there, gentlemen. Hey, Doc. I'm ready for my sponge bath. Uh now, for that, he gets the first shot. Oh. Bedside manor needs a little work. Hey, don't think I don't know that you got sick just so I would wait on you. <laughs> Seems like the best way to get you to talk to me. Oh, look at that. The vaccine just ran out. You guys get a room already. <laughs> Go easy on me, Doc. I don't like needles. Oh, get out. Ouch. Oh, ouch. Oh. That does not oh. hurt. Oh. Oh, bad. Okay, you two. Feel better. I'll be back in a bit. It was a tough three days. No, oh, I'd say. Who's that? That's the CEO of Onitex. He just closed a deal to become the new supplier to the hospital now that Keller's out of business. How'd you close the deal? Congrats. Now that you owe us one, let's get down to business. We have an opportunity for you that's going to make you some real money. 